Hey guys, Mac here again. So today I'm talking about how to run Windows 10 natively on your MacBook Pro. This is a follow up after all those videos I've been doing recently about virtualization. Anyway, I'm gonna take you through how to do it, but also if you jump to this time code here, I'll explain why it's perhaps not such a good idea to run it like this in the first place. Anyway, let's get into it. The first thing we're going to need is a Windows 10 ISO image. Now, fortunately, we can download this directly from Microsoft. I'll put the link for this in the description below. Go into here, select the latest version you can find. What I'm gonna do is just select the language that I want, so I'm just gonna go for English. You want the 64-bit download. So select that, and off it will go and download our Windows 10 ISO. Now, fortunately, I have a ridiculous internet connection, so it won't take long at all, but that could take you a little while to download. So that's now all done. We've got a copy of the ISO. You can leave it in the downloads folder if you wish. And now let's move on and we'll do the bootcamp part of the installation. What we're going to do now is run the bootcamp assistant on the laptop and actually get the Windows installation process started. Now the simplest way to do that is just to search for Bootcamp in Spotlight. There we go, fire it up. Now when you get that, just click the next on here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select the size of our Windows partition. Now I'm going to go for about 200 gigabytes on this laptop, but you may want to go smaller than that. Also, you'll see at the top, it has found the ISO image we've previously downloaded. If it doesn't, you may have to click the choose button and go find it yourself. But when you've done that, click the install button. This bit can take a little while, so just be patient here. Now, as soon as you get this prompt to enter your password or to use the touch ID, the machine is going to reboot and it will restart the Windows setup. So let's jump across to that piece now. So after the reboot, you should see that Windows is starting to install. Now I'm not gonna take you through all of the Windows installation procedure because it's mostly straightforward. It will ask, for example, your region. So I'm just gonna enter what my country and region is. There we go. Now I'm not going to enter a product key, so I'm going to click I don't have a product key, but if you do have one, this is the place to put it in. Now if you don't enter a product key, it will ask you what version you're installing. I'm going to install Windows 10 Pro because that's the product that I'm licensed for. So we'll accept the license agreement. So when that's all done, you'll be asked to restart and that's when we can go set up our account and all that stuff. So here it's asking for my region. I'm gonna stay with the UK. I'm gonna stay with the US keyboard. Um, now we'll just let it finish the setup. For my use here, I'm going to set it up for personal use. I'm also going to set it up for an offline account, so let's get that set up. You'll have to enter some memorable information here for account recovery. And you'll also now get asked several different questions, which I'm sure you're going to read thoroughly before selecting your answers. Now once that's all done, it should take you into the final profile setup and eventually you will be left at the Windows desktop. It can take a little while for it to sort itself out, but eventually you, you should reboot and you should be able to get into your desktop. Now, there is a final piece that you absolutely must do and it's, and it's critical to using Windows and that is get the bootcamp drivers installed. Now, eventually you should get this pop-up which is welcome to the bootcamp installer. And what we're going to do is just hit next and let all those drivers install. This can take a little while, so please be patient. Now eventually when that's finished, you'll get the notification that it's finished and you can restart. Now once you restart, you will find that you'll have a bootcamp icon in your system tray and you'll be able to configure things like the touchpad. So let's go and have a look at stuff like that. 
So here we are with our freshly built Windows 10 machine running in bootcamp. Now this is running natively on my 16 inch MacBook Pro. If you look down here in the system tray, you will see that you'll have an icon now for bootcamp. If I right click on that, you'll see you've got the option there for the bootcamp control panel, or you can even restart in Mac OS. So let's have a look at the control panel. So here's where you can configure the Apple specific environment stuff for your Windows 10 machine. So you can see that my startup disk is set to bootcamp. So if I was to restart this machine, it would start in Windows and not in Mac OS. If I look at the trackpad, you'll see that I've already enabled things like tap to click, dragging, drag lock, secondary click and also a secondary tap as well. Now the keyboard, because this machine has the touch bar, I've set the F keys to display by standard, but if I hold down the function key, that's when I get the extra functionality of those keys. So for example, all the sound and the brightness and all that sort of stuff will appear when I hold down the function key. If you had an external display connected, which I don't at the moment, there'd be some options in here. So this is where you configure all that sort of good stuff. So let's move on. We'll have a look at the performance of this machine in bootcamp and then perhaps talk about why I wouldn't recommend doing this on laptops unless you have a, a particular driver to need it. In terms of performance, this machine absolutely flies in Windows, as you'd expect to be found, but it's a very high spec machine. So if you look here, you can see the eight cores and the 16 logical processors, and you can see that this machine's got 32 gig of RAM in it. Now, one thing that is interesting is the fact that you can only use the dedicated GPU, which in this case is an AMD Radeon Pro 5500. Now, this is one of the reasons why I don't use Bootcamp, because using that graphics card has quite a profound effect on battery life. It shortens the battery life on this machine a hell of a lot. But let's have a look at the general performance. If I was to fire up Office, for example, I'm sure you can see there that it absolutely flies along, as you would expect for a machine of this specification. Now, what is interesting is if you have a look at the benchmark results. So for example, here, I've got the Cinebench results from when it's running Windows 10 natively. You'll see there, for example, the CPU scores 1443 and the OpenGLs 166 frames per second. Now let's have a look at it running in parallels. Now, just to be clear, in parallels, I configured it with all of the processor cores and 16 gig of RAM. So if we put those side by side, what you will see in terms of the CPU, there's not an awful lot that's lost to virtualization. Now you will see that there is a significant improvement in graphics, however. So I, I suspect if you have graphics heavy applications and you need to use Windows, then Bootcamp is probably the way to do it compared to running it in parallels. But just for general office type stuff, this machine doesn't feel that different when I'm running it in parallels as opposed to running it in Bootcamp natively. So in summary then, what you'd expect is this machine to absolutely fly in Windows 10, and in reality, it absolutely does. But there are problems with running Windows natively on MacBook Pros. Let's move on and we'll have a look at some of those issues that I'm talking about. And these are the reasons why I don't run Windows 10 natively on my MacBook Pros, and I tend to use virtualization. As I alluded to earlier, my main issues around using my MacBook Pro with Windows running on it comes around the thermal management and the battery life. So the first thing to point out, which I think I pointed out earlier, is the fact that I can only use the AMD Radeon Pro when I'm running Windows in Bootcamp. I can't use the lower powered Intel graphics chip, which works under Mac OS. Now, of course, that really does impact on battery life. Now, the other issue I have, and this is probably my main issue, it comes around the thermal behavior and the temperatures. So let me have a look at that. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna fire up the Intel Power Gadget. What I am also going to do is show you an application called Max Fan Control. Now what this does, it not only allows me to manually configure the fans, it will also show you the fan operating speed. Now, as you can see right now, all I'm doing is recording the screen and the temperatures are averaging around 80 degrees. They're sometimes peaking up to the 90s. The utilization is next to nothing and the fan speeds are still pretty high. Now watch what happens when I actually load this machine. So I've got a, a little app here called a heavy load and all this does is actually load the processors. So let's leave this running for a couple of minutes. Now watch the temperatures, watch the frequency of the processor and of course watch the fans once I do this. So you immediately see the CPU utilization jump up, which is what we'd expect. You can also see the temperatures flatlining at 100 degrees now, and that introduces throttling quite quickly. So 
So just running this for a few minutes, you'll see that now the processor is throttling back to 2.3 gigahertz, which is the stated clock speed. You'll see that the temperature is, well, it peaked up at 100 degrees. Obviously now the fans are running flat out. And because I'm running on flat out, it's managing to drop the temperature. The problem I see with running this under boot camp is this happens really quickly. So I don't need to be doing much for all of a sudden the fans to be ramped up, the processor to be throttled back and the machine to get quite hot. And that's not to mention of course the effect it has on the battery life which is kind of crippling so it is a combination of these factors that make running windows natively on these particular macbook pros not very attractive now i know a lot of people like the hardware but if you're going to buy one of these machines buy it for mac os if you want to run windows there are better machines out there for that purpose now of course none of these things seem to happen under mac os so what that tells me is that the optimizations are within mac os and mac os running on this machine where they are not present is in the boot camp drivers that are installed when you install windows on this machine natively I sometimes run Windows 10 via Boot Camp on my iMac Pro for a few specific apps and in that scenario it kind of makes sense. I don't have the battery restrictions and the fans aren't as intrusive as there's typically other things going on in this office anyway. I wouldn't and don't run Boot Camp on my laptop though, mainly because of those restrictions we have just been through. If I needed a native Windows laptop, I'd buy a native Windows laptop. If you just need Windows now and again for certain things, then virtualization is probably the way to go. There's even a free virtualization package, VirtualBox, that will probably fit the bill for you. I guess the important thing is to choose the right tool for the job. It's the output of what you're doing that really counts. Anyway, that's enough for me today. Catch you in the next one.